Welcome back to Channel 37. We're here at Bufaco Modular Day in the beautiful Barcelona, and we're here talking to Federico from Jolin Lab. Thanks, thanks for having me. Yesterday we saw this very inspiring range of capacitive touch modules. You're mm -hmm. bringing the touch and the sensuality back into the modular <laughs> system. Can you tell us a little bit about those? <laughs> yep, uh, this is our new series of modules called the Yakta system. And at the moment we have GitCat, there is a four channel or eight channel LFO and we have a goblet, there is a dual filter, filter and get track, there is a wave squarifier and axles as a wave folder. They are all analog at the moment and also the, the controls. While being touch, there are no microcontrollers behind so you can interact uh, with your, your body and the inductance, inductance of your own fingers with, also in a performance. One day I woke up and I looked at my modular synth they're all nice and ready on, on the table. I was like, but we are not in the 50. Like, I don't need all those knobs and cables and stuff. I was kind of being upset of, of that system that was new and mm -hmm. all made by me that looked like something that from a distant past. I wanted it to look in a different way and to have a different feeling while playing with it. Mm -hmm. That's why also we moved into a a modular within a modular because the modules itself, like the patch points, the in and out, are apart from from what is making the sound or create, creating all the LFOs and uh, envelopes. And so you can just have a free space for your hand and mind to interact with it okay. while having all the lights indicating you what is going on. Because mm -hmm. also back in the days you could not, you didn't have LEDs or there's this no indication. Kind of, yes, you didn't yeah. have this kind of cheap way of, so of doing lights. You had needed a drive circuit, a light bulb, and it was making a lot of noise. Uh, so it was difficult to have uh, lights in a modular. But yeah. nowadays, it's one of the most easiest part, mm -hmm. and while it gives you a great indication of what is going on. So lights and touch, uh, it's our new way of in thinking about the modular world. Yeah. Yep. So the organization of having all of the hardware points in another part, this is, mm. this is facilitating a better performance experience. Is that part of it? Yes, yeah. a better mm. performance for one that is playing also because you can interact with your body. And also, it, you are seeing it uh, as a uh, not to be obsolescent. So if a module breaks, mm. maybe the, the mechanical parts are the ones that are the most easiest to break. Mm -hmm. So having them apart from the actual sound engine could be useful also for, to, to replace them. Mm -hmm. and it's not expensive as the whole sound engine. Mm -hmm. So it's also, that part is also part of, of the concept. Yeah. We just saw good points in doing it. Mm -hmm. So we just, we want now to stick to it and being modular within the model. So the module itself will have all different parts in a separate small panels, yeah. so you can buy the whole set, or maybe um, you just need uh, some sockets in, because the other ones you need a bigger system. You can buy just the sockets while having the case itself for the performance yeah. free to interact with without cables going on everywhere. Yeah. That, I play also live yeah. and with uh, Pedro, my colleague that plays a saxophone and all the time I'm like, okay, there are so many cables, what is going on? It's, it's, it's mm. difficult. You need to go just with memory without even looking like, yeah. all the time. So in life situation, I, I, found it, um, I find it useful. So mm. that's why also it's there, this mm. concept. You're it's a concept that it seems like it's planting roots for the future, the idea ah. of you know, evolving into this performance space and also you know, getting rid of the built-in obsolescence that's a part of a lot of these modules. Yeah, Thanks. it's very exciting. Yeah, because um, Eurorack stuff could be expensive. This is due also to the fact that uh, the, the manufacturer are maybe one, two, three, <laughs> four people maximum. So we don't have that uh, scale economy that yeah. can no cheap labor. No, yeah. <laughs> no, no cheap labor, no cheap materials, no. Mm -hmm. So it can be expensive in that way because you can buy maybe nowadays uh, also a polyphonic analog synthesizer for 200 bucks sometimes, 200 euros. But mm -hmm. this is due to how many of them are made. 
we are the small factories, small manufacturers, small laboratories. So in this way, having uh, a module itself modular, we can still be uh, kind of competitive in that kind of a scale economy mm -hmm. while uh, working in the same way. So with concept, the development, and we, we think about the modules, we make the modules, we play the modules all by ourselves. There is no, no one else involved. So you know that something that comes from the modular manufacturers is something that has a character because of that also. Because mm -hmm. we don't have someone that tells us <laughs> what to do more. <laughs> so it seems like the assembly might be easier because it's just a single PCB with uh, yep. all the SMD on one side. Is that the case? Is it yep, DIY? Yep, 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 yep. It's going to be DIY and uh, we always say that uh, it's made by humans and machine mm -hmm. because there are some parts that are made by humans or by you, the DIYers. Yeah. Some other parts that are dealt by the machine. So the machines that print the circuit board. So uh, it's really easy to have them DIY because you just have to solder the sockets mm -hmm. and once you place the sockets on, on the panel and and screw them it's done because all the circuit part being on one side it's uh, it's already made and you don't have to do it and you okay. don't have to deal with it maybe you can you just have to solder the sockets and connect the power header and the and there is another EC header on the back of the module that connects the module to the in and out matrix okay. uh, and you're done. One matrix can uh, give supply to two modules, it is a two row matrix, or four modules, a four row matrix. Okay. So also for a bus board, it's useful because you just need one socket on the bus board and you can power up four modules. So okay. that could be also useful. And they that's don't need... That's a huge advantage. You don't need a lot of power for them because okay. they are made to be not uh, expensive and energetically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's just... We get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, for example, four of them just use 200 milliamps. Yeah. So you can have uh, just on a single power supply. For example, I have LPGs or stuff that all by themselves consume 300 milliamps because also of the design that it's made for, not for error aqua, maybe adapted just in the size. So, those are all the circuits are also new and okay. specifically made for Eurodac modules. Okay. So they all have CV. If there is a control, you have CV input or a control on a panel for it. So they are made to be 100% modular. Okay. So you've described a lot of um, your personal desires in modular and your inspiration and it being, you know, the, these modules really a reflection of your spirit. Mm. So how did, you, how did you come into the modular world and how, what is your vision for your company? I know you make really, you're interested in really unique new sounds, something that you can't find elsewhere. Thank Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Thank you. Uh, actually, I came to the modular world watching um, a performance that was made. Uh, uh, at that moment, I didn't understand how, what, what, is, what is happening? Like there is just a bunch of, uh, a wall full of cables and lights, and this is, he's controlling it, it's just two hands, but it's, sounds like an orchestra going mm. on and I watched this performance and I was like okay I need to understand what is yeah. happening because I was a musician at the, at the beginning also Pedro he plays the saxophone so he, I play the guitar and sing so we were involved in music since we were kids but I never uh, stumbled upon a modular synthesizer and I needed to understand what was going on and then I fell into the to the black hole and, and never <laughs> it eats you up doesn't it yeah. and then I'm still there, still <laughs> trying to understand what is going on so yeah and it will take years I don't know lifetimes I don't know yeah it's really a, get... it's a con I mean it's continuous learning because there's so much I mean you're you're branching into new territory with the whole mm. idea of capacitive touch so there's mm. the uh, possibilities are really endless yeah this is a lot of because it involves Technical, technical parts, it involves musical parts, it involves the, the art, it could be art pieces because we have, okay, the modular part is what is making us going on and still, uh, you know, pay the rent, pay for the materials, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of boring stuff. Mm -hmm. But we also work on projects that are not made to be sold or just for a performance. Like we did Stellaria, mm -hmm. that is a so solar powered mechanical flower. Wow, There's that's beautiful, from... I'd love to see that. <laughs> yeah. You can find details on the website or we also update Instagram often and there is a 
updates on all our projects. Stellaris is just a mechanical flower that uh, uh, can live on its own because it can receive power from the sun and follow it and it creates sounds depending on the atmosphere, so on the temperature, on the inclination, on the humidity. And the sound itself is a def defensive mechanism because it's not made to be for us. Okay. It's just for, for the flower itself to defend from whatever is going on. Okay. And it needs just the act of creation to be born. Mm -hmm. And after you finish it, it can live on its own. So it's also a new um, kind of technology that doesn't need us, mm -hmm. but we just uh, have to make it and create it and then it can live on its own. So uh, wow. also to fight the boundaries between life, biology, mechanical instruments. Or That's very exciting. So there's so many different worlds, artistic, programming, mm -hmm. mechanical, biological, mm -hmm. technical, that are, are meeting here. Mm -hmm. Yes, very exciting. making modules and having an instrument that other people can play, mm -hmm. just even without knowing what's going on, it's, it's great. Yeah. Because maybe they like the sound, they like the interaction, they, they don't need also this kind of philosophy that is behind. Or, mm -hmm they can just play it as like but still I personally believe that I need this kind of project maybe once a year to develop them and to they are not products because otherwise they're always focused on uh, how can I make that to be sold how can I no mm. I don't need that we did also the banjoing mm. there is a DIY project that it's a dual banjoing and everyone can download the files from the website and make their own it's not made to be a product, it's not nice and the, all the controls are close together. It's made it's for exploration, for the yes, individual. Yes, yes, yeah. and also as a DIY exercise for people to, mm. to get into SMD, heavy kind of SMD because it's really tight. But mm -hmm. uh, and it, also the documentation, there is no, not a manual because I, I personally want the people to uh, experiment itself also to study a bit for doing it because mm -hmm. it could be a hard exercise for other stuff Absolutely. like if you can do it if you can do that you can go it's on it's the test of your face <laughs> <laughs> so you have a lot of inspired and creative ideas for mm -hmm. these various projects you're into and also for your company where do you see your the, the focus of your company going and what are what is your inspiration for the future okay the inspiration of course is the, the modular mm -hmm. way of uh, electronic uh, instruments in this way. So to have a, a system, a case, an instrument that can change with you during time. Mm -hmm. So maybe now you need a, a lot of, for example, drums or oscillators, heavy stuff, but maybe in five years you will only need some ambient and reverb or mm -hmm. interaction with other instruments. So it can move with yourself. You while uh, maybe you can replace some uh, modules with a friend or you can sell it as a used one and buy another one. Okay. So it can change with you. And I want my personal, our personal modules because also I'm actually working on the analog and the design part and Pedro is a software uh, developer and we're working with him on some nice digital modules that will see the lights, I don't know, in maybe in years ago. It's, it's difficult, but let, let's see. I want the modular itself to be modular. Yes. So not, not the single unit, but even the units needs to change, can change Moving. with you. Can, yeah. Because maybe you are doing um, an experimental live set mm -hmm. and, and you can just have the touch parts and interact with it, or you are in a studio and you just want the filter to behave in that way mm -hmm. and um, and stay there and maybe to calibrate it at, at, at the millimeter to have the mm. resonance in that perfect spot so the potentiometer also can be added on the control and you can just control it with the potentiometer but maybe yeah. you don't need that in a live set and you can save some space to add more modulations or mixer or other stuff it's about choice yep, yep, being yep. really able to specify what you need in every moment yes yep. you can have an external we'll ha we will have an external module with potentiometer or mm. even a module itself with potentiometer and maybe a switch to choose mm. between the potentiometer and the capacitive touch so it depends on the situation you can always choose which kind of control 
you'd want to have on the module itself. Exciting. And uh, about the designs, like it, the sound part is the most important, but also the design of it needs to be um, clear mm -hmm. and uh, at the same time uh, characteristic of the instrument itself. Because this is also the fun part of Aerorack modulus because the designers, like most of the time, makes also the, the panels themselves. So yeah. the layout and the graphic and stuff, uh, most of the time are, um, represents also what is going on behind the modules. For example, I love uh, Dopfer or Joran, Joran Log modules. I love them because uh, it really represents also the, the way of uh, what is going on with the sound and mm. the controls. And the same for us. We want the same also for our stuff. Okay. To be concise and... To the point. To the point, yeah. <laughs> okay, I have one more question for you. So you have an instrumental background. That's where mm -hmm. I come from. I'm a classical musician. Oh. I'm curious about how you see in the future the interaction between electronic music, modular in particular, and instrumental musicians. Like for us, for me and Pedro, we are doing now a live set with saxophone and the modulars that leave also voices. So it's always nice to have uh, acoustic instruments to interact with the modular because you can go beyond and create sounds that never existed before or to have an interaction with the instruments that you never experimented before. Like, for example, talking about the saxophone, Pedro used it, uh, the, um, the clicks of the... The keys on the, the, the sounding. On the sounding to, to control some triggers on the model, for example. So maybe during a live set, you're never so touching the... the you're not making... Those control, uh, okay, but yeah. just... Uh, with a modular, you can use them also to control other drums or instruments, and also you can have a resonator or a, or a pitch tracker, or uh, there are a lot of a comparator, a lot of modules that use incoming audio signals that can be shaped and they can modulate and create all different kind of textures. So it's great for me to to have both of the world together. We played also in live jams with. Uh, orchestra of 30 people with you know, four guitars, saxophone drummers, together with the modular system, it's perfect. But even a modular system by itself can be an orchestra. If you're, of course. If you're that was what drew you to it, actually, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, sounding yeah, yeah. of the orchestra. Yeah, that, that got me. That got yeah. me completely. That's very exciting. I'd like you guys to hook your modular up to my bassoon one day and see what sure. we can do. Yeah, yeah <laughs> let's talk that, about that. That would be great. Yeah. Let's try out. I just got the uh, microphone from Ginko Synthesis. Okay. He has a really nice uh, mic, uh, mic, mic modules with the mic uh, in, like that is going out of the module itself. Okay. So you, ju you can just close it together with the cables and you can talk to the modular. Without any, that was good. Talk to the module. I finally okay. got the chance. Never, to, my friends will never see me again. <laughs> I, I finally got the chance to have one because it's, it's, it was out of stock anywhere. And yes, you can just stay there and talk to the instrument. Yeah. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Sometimes uh, we have this problem in the house because we mm. live together with other people. Yeah. I not, I do not go out for, uh, I don't go out for two days. Or three days they're like. What is going on? With strange <laughs> lights and sounds coming out of mechanical uh, flowers. That's amazing. But thanks. Well, it's been really exciting to uh, see your presentation and hear about this new world of capacitive touch. Thank, thank you so much, Federico. Thank you. Thank you guys for having us. And it was great to not to talk only about products and models, but also what's behind. That was really great. And you were so kind asking us about all this. What is going on behind the modular? So thank you so much. The man behind the modular, yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you guys, thank you.